New AI technology will assist in bushfire detection and help prevent mega fires. Joining me now is Arvind Satyam, a North Sydney cider who moved to Silicon Valley in 2006 and co-founded Pano AI. Arvind, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Talk us through what this technology can do. It's great to be here. So this technology fundamentally is about applying AI to detect bushfires as soon as they emerge. Turns out AI can do a great job being able to see the first moments of smoke. And one of the big things that we've heard as we've met fire agencies, whether it be in Australia after the Royal Commission or in the US and in Canada, every one of these large fires starts small. So if you can apply technology to be able to detect the incidents as soon as they start, be able to pinpoint exactly where it is, and then use Zoom capability to figure out exactly how that fire is evolving, you can make a lot of those early decisions that could fundamentally change the game in terms of whether that becomes a large scale incident or whether you can keep it down. And that compare that to a status quo, which is a triple O call mm. that goes into dispatch, and then you'd need to send out an engine to figure out what's happening with that incident. So we we essentially compress that time, which could be hours into minutes. Yeah, so how does the technology actually work? Is it um, video technology? Is it in drones? Um, and how is it, um, is it there permanently? Or is it only, you know, deployed in bushfire season, for example? Yeah, so great question. It's, it's there permanently. You know, one of the things that we've seen is we're no longer sitting in bushfire seasons. Fires could yeah. start any time of the year. And if you just look at the unfortunate incidents in LA, they started in the middle of winter in the second week of January. And so what we do is we deploy cameras that are sitting on top of cell towers and they're looking down on areas of high fire risk. They're continuously rotating. If you think about it, it's a 360 degree panorama that's getting updated each minute. Mm. And then you apply artificial intelligence to detect smoke and then during the day and then heat signatures at night. And we've trained that model with over 2 billion images. And, you know, if I think about San Francisco, we have self-driving cars. We have AI applied to a number of other problems. And five years ago, the question that we wanted to ask, and as somebody that grew up in Sydney watching the bushfires, yeah. we wanted to ask if the latest and greatest of tech was being applied to this problem. It turned out that it wasn't, and it could absolutely make a difference. Okay, so we're talking about really high-res pictures that AI can perhaps um, analyse better than the human eye. Is that essentially what we're talking about? Um, and can it distinguish from, um, <laughs> I don't know, like a, a backyard bonfire or something that is in the middle of um, where it could turn into a, a mega fire? Yeah, uh, so when it comes to smoke, the AI is essentially getting trained on a lot of images that could tell you is it smoke or not smoke. Okay. Now, in the early moments of smoke, uh, it's hard to distinguish, is that a backyard barbecue gone wrong or is that a fire that could spread into a large bushfire? So what we're training the model to do is to detect smoke as quickly as it emerges. Mm -hmm. And then we have human analysts that are trying to create apply context. So we want to make sure that we're notifying to fire agencies on incidents that become smoke versus a cloud uh, or a dust cloud. You have a farmer that's going down a hill and it's kicking up a dust cloud. We want to make sure that we eliminate that. Now, as far as whether that is a large scale prescribed burn or a high rate of spread bushfire, we're essentially giving that intelligence to fire agencies and they're able to make that decision real time uh -huh. as to how to respond and how to more effectively respond. Yeah, right. So you're just giving the information to the fireys and, and, and then they do their further analysis and you're about early detection. So has this been rolled out? Um, has this been used at all on, on large scale, either there in America or here in Australia yet? Absolutely. So we've rolled out to 11 states in the US and we're in five states in Australia. Uh, if I think about just the last bushfire season in Australia, we're deployed in the Green Triangle, so that's both in South Australia and in Victoria. We've been able to detect 45 incidents that are bushfires, vegetation fires, which have fundamentally provided that actionable intelligence mm -hmm. to fireys that are able to sit back and determine, how do I allocate resources more effectively in this case? So if it's something that's moving really quickly, 
a, a high rate of spread incident, do I send out multiple engines? Do I send out a helicopter or a plane? And there was an incident in the Green Triangle this season on the 10th of March where there were 50,000 lightning strikes and dry lightning is one of the causes of fires. And in this case, we were able to spot any flare ups very quickly that allowed them to respond much faster. And, and the Green Triangle put out a note recently talking about how this has helped them contain the scale of these incidents. In the US, we've had over 425 incidents that are bushfire related that we were able to capture in, during this fire season. Arvin, we really appreciate your time this morning. Uh, let us know uh, what you're continuing to do there in Silicon Valley. It sounds impressive indeed. We'll see you soon.